All right, Corey, you know how they say the catalog is the key to artist freedom, right? Yep, yep. That's the art. That's the value. That's where the money comes from. We got a video of an artist breaking down how his catalog legit freedom, but he's giving game and his real life situation. So we got to play this one for the pod, bro, because I haven't seen a better example, a more transparent example than this, where an artist is really showing the power of their catalog and just changing their whole lifestyle. Check this out. Can you tell me how many projects you have on DSPs? Do you have any like idea? myself or like just, just as just a total all together. that I own? Like if I go to like your... Like what do I own okay, or mine? Okay, yours and then the TSF. Uh, okay, so uh, my catalog, I probably have maybe like... It's, in, it's between 27 to 30 albums or something like that in the 10-year in the ten year span from the Sauce Twins to Sauce Walker. I have between... 27, 30 albums almost. And that's a lot of music, first and foremost. And (laughs) let's just start here. Key to the catalog is you got to get the music out there in the first place. Yeah, Yeah, we got to get the performance going on. But let's just let this thing. Especially by the end of this year, it's going to be for sure full 30. It might be a full 30 and I miss count. I just know for sure it's somewhere. It's in that range. What about just as a a label? As a collective, as a label, I probably own. I don't know, maybe uh, maybe, maybe a hundred and twenty to hundred fifty projects, like wow. albums, because like all of my friends, I got fifty artists, fifty artists signed to my distribution and my record label. Ten of them are are, are, are producers that make beats and stuff, and they still have and the, they still have albums as well, like uh, bodies of work as well. And then I got. 40 some uh, artists This is a little bit Over 40 It's a little bit Over 53 But 10 are producers And the other 40 artists Are like artists And some of the artists That signed to me People don't even know That they signed to me Or that they my artists Or that we have business With each other But I still Are, are, are in on their catalog So if you co- Incorporate Everybody that's Signed to me That I have a 50-50 shit, uh, Split with their catalog on I probably got like 150 albums Jesus. 150 albums Would you say and that And if you look at that By songs Each album got like 15, 15 20, 20 songs yeah. on it So I probably own I don't know 2,000 3,000 4,000 songs Alright again Keys to the catalog Is numbers First and foremost yeah. I gotta remember Every single song you drop Is just a drop In that bigger bucket Of having a full blown catalog But like let, let's, let's get it a little bit Deeper into the game Back to your catalog. Recently, you linked up with Empire, and I'm wondering, like, what was the timing for you to, like, make the decision to kind of link up with a guy like Ghazi and bring what you got going on in uh, Houston and TSF together with what's going on in the Bay Area at Empire? Um, it's a funny story because Ghazi been trying to sign me since the beginning of my career. It was just... um. I was doing business with people at the time who just didn't see fit for us to do business together. And at the time, I've always had control over my career, but I was trying to allow people to have management and have opinions and things of that, like that. And it just it, it never worked out for us in the beginning. And when I finally found distribution, it was before God, I found a distribution on my own without guys that having any or Empire being anything doing a part of it. I found uh, I found a distribution in California when I was hanging with Famous Dicks. I, I met this guy named Wayne and I started working with Create Music Group. Create Music Group, yeah. right? And um, all right, so I, that's a key part of something he said. Like he he don't touch on it all the way, but he basically says, "Hey, I've tried to have all these different managers and groups. He he had to do a lot of testing, mm-hmm. but he but he ended up taking his artists." career into his own hands and found distribution in a situation that made sense for him yeah like that part we can't miss on because he ain't go through it all the way but you know good managers bad managers or people who just aren't a good fit for whatever the time is like situations like this everybody has it everybody has it along the way yeah when i first got with create um this is like eight years ago and they like you know they they filtered my whole catalog and like went through all my YouTube videos and all of the just the bodies of work that I own that I allowed them to facilitate and they came back with like eighty racks or some shit like that that you didn't even know was out there for you. I didn't even know that was out there and they're like yeah you know you, from what you're looking at right now you could be making somewhere between eighty to one hundred and ten thousand dollars a month just right now. And I was like, Bro, that's a lot of money missed, though. That's a lot. Of money missed. That's a lot of, I, I find a, a lot of these boutique distribution situations, too, are a lot better for artists who do have something moving like that because they 
the deals are usually where that money is also their money too and a percentage so they are inspired and incentivized to go find that money for you out in the internet yeah. but if i'm just on distro kid or you know one of the lower tiers of most of these distro platforms it's like my job is to put your junk on the platforms yeah, I mean, you know I mean, yeah, I mean, I even went up from there because I mean, create music group is is special in the sense that like, I mean, this is the first time I ever really heard it be referred to in the same breath as like a distribution company. Typically, I hear more about it in the realm of, of publishing company, mm -hmm. and so now that yeah. makes me wonder: Are they a publishing company offering distro services to stand out, or are they a distro company that figured out publishing services to to stand out? You know, because, right. and I think the other big testament to it. Um, and, and probably is what made him so attractive to someone like a create music group is that they're looking at like, hey bro, you you have years in the game, you've built this catalog, there's a very clear line of value here that we could help you out with. Because to your point, it's like, hey, there's probably money that you're missing that you don't know about. You have the catalog size to where that is very likely, you know what I'm saying, and it makes sense, and this is what we can do for you. And to your point, it's like, how many other situations would it have made sense specifically for what he is going through in his artist tenure. Not many, bro. Yeah. Not many. That was like eight years ago, so you know what I'm saying? I got with Create and I brought I brought my whole label over to Create and I left my catalog there. Like but I still have probably like a sixteen or thirteen or twelve album catalog that's not with Create too, that's with TuneCore. That was like from the very, very super very super beginning. Yeah. Premature, premature right. TSF stuff. You know what I'm saying? So when I got recreate, I start making. Bro, you can have different situations. I love this. Mm -hmm. Problem is, he had a, like a lot of artists that we talked to. They're doing this at the very beginning where they're diversifying these mm -hmm. distributors, and it's like you only got ten songs out, and you have five, six different distros that is spread between. That's not the play. Yep. But oh, I'm about to drop, you know, a five album run with this one distro, and then I'm gonna do another five album run with another distro in different situations. You can leverage your catalog like that because it's it's product, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just a line of product, and you can say, "Hey, we're gonna do a deal around this. This is one of my products. I'm the artist." But you, but a lot of times, I think artists think about themselves as the product. Yep. When you are the creator of the product. Yep. Right. Like a label, okay, because of that agreement, you might be the product that gets, you know uh locked up for a given period of time until the deal is over right but a lot of these the distro deal side is more so no the music is the product and how do we want to package it do i want album one through three and then you do album four through five somewhere else that's really what you should be thinking but i think most artists again like they're just like i'm looking for this one home to have and hold me forever, that's not how this game works. Yeah, 100%. I start making nothing less than five to six figures a month for the rest of my life from that point, from seven years ago. Wow. Every month, every 25th of every month, I've been getting a six figure to seven, I mean, a, a five figure to six figure check. And that could be anywhere from 60,000 to 200,000. I've never got no more than 200,000 so far. Like that's my, still crazy. My goal is to get like a quarter million a month. So oh, every four months, I'm making them. Yeah, 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 independent. This just off YouTube videos and songs and songs and shit. So create just, you know what I'm saying? They open that door to like just really make me, my record label and me and my friends an actual company, an actual business to where every single um, of my friends and associates and counterparts on my record label all get a check on the 25th of every month. Man, that's the, that's the thing, man. Like, cause really all of us are owed this money. <laughs> Black <Blackmark. laughs> when we Yeah, when we, get, <laughs> when we get put in clips, if somebody clips you up, Corey, or somebody clip me up, and then it's being played on a repost page and all that stuff, Really, all of us are owed like money for everything we put out content-wise. Let alone like if you're creating a hard product like music or something like that. And it, the right situations can make sure you get all of that. We, we, shoot, who got deals out there for us, man? I was just thinking that. Yeah, who 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 has a deal? If y'all, some, somebody comes with the right pitch, <laughs> we are we are open to what it looks like to make the pod do what pods can do. <laughs> So obviously, create was great for you. That was create. So when now, when you talk about the empire shit, it only made sense for me to sign a deal of any sort with any company that was only that only if they was going to allow me to not bring my catalog with me.
Because most companies, they when you got you. a catalog like you, they're like, yo, we're going to need to bring that catalog over. Period. If you want some millions of dollars from us, if you want us to do business because with you. Because if whatever we do together don't work, the catalog's still going to bring in that bread. Hey, back to Simple what I'm saying. Exactly. Yep. Back to what I'm saying. You already got something that was that's working. Don't go into a new situation and thinking that you got to mortgage your house. Right? It's like, no, nah, my house is already doing what it needs to do. We can go build a new house. But this house right here is good. My car is paid off. This house is paid off. You know what I mean? Grandma like, no, nah, I'm not selling this thing. I, I'm a, I could pass this thing down to the kids. Y'all up there mortgaging grandma house instead of just building a brand new house and saying, no, this is proof that I can build a house. So let's go build a house together. Mm -hmm. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right, forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't want to get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. That's no labels with an S and put in the code no labels O2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. Forever Fan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels O2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. So in reality, Empire was the only, it was a few of them that kind of respected it, but Empire, like, it, guys, he actually respected my business mind. He respected my business module, and he 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 respected the numbers that I'm able to pull up, put up on my own without a company, without resources, without an engine, without a machine, without the, the being serviced correctly. I'm still creating, I'm, I'm generating six figures. I he says on key there without being serviced correctly, without all the things. And really, you want to look like a potential lick to these companies, yep. but then don't get licked. That's the game, right? They need to be able to see opportunity, but you don't want to get screwed in terms of how you allow them to be a part of that opportunity if that's what you do. So they need to be able to look like, dang, this artist is going crazy without me. Mm hmm if I add what I know how to do, I can make this go crazier. Yep. What a lot of artists are looking for is, I'm not going crazy, but if I if I had you, I could go crazy. It's like, no, nah, man, I'm trying to multiply. I'm a multiplier here. That's what most people in the business want to be. They want to be a multiplier, but if you're working with zero, what does my multiplier do? Zero. Yeah. If you're working with one, my multiplier, okay, I'm a 3X. You're a one that just left it at three. Uh, I guess, but that doesn't give me much gains. You know what I mean? If I could three X something, I want to add my three to a two, to another three, to a five. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. then I get better, better returns on it. That's how people are really looking at it in terms of investing their time. It's particularly people who aren't like just straight up trying to screw you over. But they're like, I, I'm not trying trying to screw you over. But I am trying to be real because just how you value your time, your life, and your investment, this is how I value my time, my life, and my investment. And I might not even own this product, so you're going to get passive returns off of this thing. Mm -hmm. After the work, I'm only going to get return on a certain period of this work. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I agree, man. I think I think it speaks a lot, too, to just where the mindset of the, the major label system is, is moving towards, right? Because you can see through artist conversations like this and you know little stuff you may pick up with other artists that labels are very clearly focusing on a catalog yep. acts right artists that or songs that have been hits or at least you know culturally loved for whatever reason for a, a certain amount of time and are actively looking for artists that have already built some type of a foundation you know and I was just telling the artists this today I'm as, to the point you just made it's like hey bro any proof of concept that you have that this could work immediately push you over like 90% of the artists that are, are typically coming through the label system. Like for you, this thing may seem small, but you no, know, they've talked to a thousand artists this week and you might have been the first one that mm -hmm. even offer that type of information or that type of thing around it. And so like for the artists that are 
interested in signing to a label or just even want to like flirt with the idea, you have to go into it knowing that the artist who would like a sauce Walker has been working for years and, and built catalog and these revenue sources and has a proven track record are going to be more valuable and valued than you the artist that to your point is looking for the situation to get started once I get there. Facts, bro. If I come up to you and I was like, yo, I have this amazing idea for a company and based on what the marketplace shows, I can turn this into a hundred million dollar company. Okay. Oh, sounds mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. But mm -hmm. what if I say, yo, I got another, I, I got an idea for an amazing company to take advantage of an opportunity. This could be a hundred million dollar company. I've already built out this company to a certain degree, got some customers and I'm about $200,000 in revenue a year. That hit different, right? It do hit different. I man. already did the work, and I'm really proving this. The problem is, a lot of artists are option A. They're just an idea. Their whole career is an idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you need to be an idea that's been executed and got a little bit of return, some level of prototype, like you said, that that's saying, "Oh snap!" Not only did he show the opportunity, the opportunity makes sense, but he's made ground. And shoot, how can we just like double down and get this to that that potential? Yes, yeah, so he was able to make a quarter million with a with a six people team. Imagine if I added my my thirty people team. And, oh, he didn't even know he could be making money over here and like. But Which we, is, bro, that's all they did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's really exactly that. <laughs> we just had to go collect. We just pushed the fucking button. We it's not even like we did work. We just said, hey, um, you're actually supposed to get money over here. Yeah, bro, you, you, you looked over there yet? Oh no, we got a little surprise for you then, man. You don't like this. <laughs> easy, easy work. Easy work. I'm gen annually every twelve months. I'm generating millions of dollars, and then not a small one, like a nice right. amount. So I'm nowhere near with Empire. Right, is, but but, but like TSF is a very small. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a small indie like major. Like, what is I got a staff, a back office. I got two two commercial places of business, two compounds right. where my company is ran and facilitated. And you know, guys, it was just the only person who was like, you know what? I see what you got going on. I respect it, and I'm willing to. To fund it, I'm willing to give you more, more finances, more weapons, and I don't want to own your catalog. If you feel comfortable at one place at a period of time, where you willing for me to give you X, Y, Z amount of millions of dollars for your catalog to bring it over here, then we can do that. But I kind of then, you know, like really made it clear with them, like I just don't want to sell my catalog. I just want to live off of it forever. Right. Yeah. Like that's something I can. Real quick, next lesson. Like, hey, there is somebody out there who will give you the deal. If you got something real, there's someone who's who will give you a deal. That makes sense for you. Y'all just gotta stop saying yes to the first man who show up. Having a catalog that you are in the green and you don't owe anybody recoupment, that's like you own a Chick Fil A, two, three, four Chick Fil A's, or you own some WalMarts or some car dealerships or something. After all the bills is paid, your pro and this is the thing with the music shit too. It feels like it's all profit because you been did the work. Right. I been did the music. I been shot those videos. I bro, he 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 keeps he cooking right here. here. He, he cooking. Yeah. He cooking. <laughs> I'ma just throw the term out: cash flow. That's the big big thing he talking about: cash flow, money coming in month to month, and it's liquid. Cause he said liquid cash. Y'all understand that? All right, Jeff Bezos. Right, billionaire, Elon Musk, billionaire, but that doesn't mean all that money is liquid. Mm -hmm. Or right? a lot of it's tied up in their business, especially Elon. Right, a lot of his net worth. Meanwhile, somebody like Bill Gates, who pulled out a long time ago, hasn't been leading Microsoft. Obviously, he's on the board. Da da da. Like liquid cash, he's probably still the richest in terms of just liquid cash and able how and that gives him a flexibility to take advantage of new opportunities mm -hmm. right it's the same thing on a, on every single level so when you talk about all these things pop up what you can do or new opportunities that can grow your money in other ways and might become long-term investments if you have liquid bro like cash coming in to fund your lifestyle and new opportunities bro like you good you you are good versus that I've heard this from a lot of people like who came across the lump sums. It's like they get that lump sum, but then you also don't see new money coming in, so you panic. Like, where is the new money gonna come from? Because you know that this could go down. I still gotta live life, kind of like what he said. So 
I don't know, man. I, I love the fact he cooking on this point. I've been released these projects. That shit been paid for, but I'm still getting paid for it right now. It's like owning a movie company. It's, right. a, it's a huge difference. Sure, yeah. So I don't it's have like to. A famous TV show goes into syndication. You're gonna get once paid it's off syndicated, that show. you're rich forever. Right. Whoever the fuck owns Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Martin, any of these type of shows, bro. You know, like the people who did Friends are making like I don't know. It might be like ten. It might be like. I don't know. They're making like tens of millions of dollars a year off of Friends episodes. And like they the did creators? No, I'm talking about the actors. Oh, each sure. of them. And okay. that was that show was like 20 years ago when it went off. God damn. Okay. So when you talk about syndication, that's what I think about, bro. Like you just, it's gone. It's past work. Mailbox money, crazy. Just say you get three hundred thousand dollars a month for the rest of your life. You can spend the entire three hundred thousand dollars down be another to zero. Another three hundred the next month. That's imp like that doesn't. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But that's what owning your catalog as an independent artist Just means. Like, yeah. If you're successful, for sure, you're getting a guaranteed ninety thousand, one twenty, one fifty, one forty, one hundred and twenty-five thousand guaranteed every month. I can flush one hundred and twenty-five, and this has nothing to do with all the extra money I make. And I'm getting 200, 180, 190. But this has nothing to do when I'm going to get 20,000 over here for this song, this show. I'm getting 8,000 for this post. I'm getting 10,000 to wear these clothes. I'm That's the best place to end it. New money coming in every single month when you can still put your energy into new opportunities. And if you spent that whole 100K, whole 50K, whatever that number is for you that month, it doesn't matter because it's going to reappear the very next month. Yeah, 100%. The power of the catalog. <laughs> this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Redman Sean. And I'm Corey. We out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is... We don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.